While our recent boom in the Stanford real estate market was great for sellers, it was downright ruthless for buyers. The good news for buyers is that over the past few months, things have normalized a bit, but I wouldn't say they've gotten easy. To give you a better perspective, why don't we look at how things were before the recent market boom so you can make the best decision on whether to buy or sell. And for buyers who hang out until the end of the video, I have a really great loan program that's going to save you a ton of money. If you're new to the channel, my name's Charlie Vinci and I'm a local realtor. All of these graphs I'm going to show you are updated on the first of the month on my website and you can get the most up-to-date information by going to the link on the screen or scanning this QR code with your phone's camera. While you're there, you can create a custom market report to get updated on the exact segment of the market that's most important to you. Let's see what's happening in the Stanford market. The median number of days on the market in Stanford for September was 30. In September of previous years, it was 37 in 2021, 49 in 2020, 63 in 2019, 51 in 2018, and 61 in 2017. Obviously, properties are still selling much quicker than they did prior to the COVID market, and you should expect the best single family properties, those that are competitively priced and cosmetically appealing, to sell in the first few weeks. We're finding that buyers still need to move quickly to get the best homes. The months of supply graph is essentially a ratio of buyers and sellers. If the graph is trending down, things are getting better for sellers. If it's trending up, things are getting better for buyers. As you can see, supply is still constrained and it's still a seller's market. We would consider the market to be balanced where neither the buyer nor the seller has an advantage when we were at six months of supply. In September of 2022, we had 2.1 months of supply. In September of previous years, we had 2.9 months in 2021, 5.3 in 2020, 7.1 in 2019, 6.3 in 2018, and six months in 2017. Notice that supply usually falls after September only to rebound again in the spring. Be aware that this graph is looking at the Stanford market as a whole and some price brackets will be hotter and others cooler. In general, if you're shopping near the median price or below it, the market is typically more brisk. So let's take a look at the median price graph for Stanford. As you can see, we hit 559,555 in September of 2022. In September of previous years, we hit 525,000 in 2021, 551,000 in 2020, 465,500 in 2019, 412,500 in 2018, and 417,500 in 2017. It's interesting that prices actually fell in 2021 only to bounce back and reach roughly the 2020 median price this year. Keep in mind that if you're shopping for a single family home in Stanford, the median in Stanford would be much higher because this data includes a disproportionate amount of lower priced sales like condos. If you're wondering why the numbers are even, it's because these are median prices and not average. I prefer using median numbers because average prices can be skewed by large sales. If you'd like, you can explore the average prices on my site by going to the link on the screen or scanning the QR code at the end of the video. Let's see what percentage of their list price sellers received in Stanford. In September of 2022, the median seller received 100% of their list price. In September of previous years, sellers received 100% in 2021, 98.2% in 2020, 97.1% in 2019, 97.8% in 2018, and 96.7% in 2017. In practice, homes that are competitively priced and cosmetically appealing will go over asking while less desirable or overpriced homes will sell for under asking. Next, let's take a look at closed sales in Stanford. While we had 129 in September of this year, in September of previous years, we had 161 in 2021, 191 in 2020, 124 in 2019, 101 in 2018, and 122 in 2017. I know some buyers have been frustrated by low inventory, but as you can see, we're selling near the typical number of homes that we did pre-COVID. It's just that the homes are selling faster now. To get a great home, you have to be able to move quickly and with confidence. For our clients, we'll do a market analysis to help them avoid overpaying. Looking at the number of home sales in Stanford, in September of 2022, we had 287. 
Back in September of previous years, we had 480 in 2021, 667 in 2020, 776 in 2019, 702 in 2018, and 750 in 2017. Notice how the number of homes for sale typically falls after September. All right, now taking a look at the pending sales in Stanford, you'll see that we had 113 in September of 2022. In September of previous years, we had 175 in 2021, 196 in 2020, 130 in 2019, 100 in 2018, and 121 in 2017. To help you make a good decision on whether to buy or sell, I'm gonna show you a historical trend that you may wanna take into account. This graph shows the median sales price for the entire county. I'm using the whole county because a lot of data will help you see the historical trend. I'm sure you noticed the fairly consistent peaks and valleys. Historically, home prices almost always peak in June. Conversely, home prices are at their lowest in February. Keep in mind that the offer was typically accepted about two months before the closing month that shows on the graph. If you'd like to get a good deal on a home this year, your best chance is to get your offer accepted in or around December. From personal experience, late November and early January can also be good times. The biggest challenge buyers are facing in the coming months is rising interest rates. Forbes and many others are predicting that rates may get as high as 8% by year's end. Every 1% increase increases your mortgage payment by 10%. But I promised you good news. If you can keep your loan amount below 1.5 million, Newtown Savings Bank is offering a rate in the upper fours with no points, yes, upper fours. Outside of this deal, the best rates I could find with no points were in the upper fives or a full 1% higher. Newtown Savings is one of our local banks and I was told that they can't do this forever, so you might just wanna reach out to them and see if it's right for you. Also, if you're concerned about falling prices, I have an article for you. I'll leave you with a link below the video. In summary, the New York Post just released a list of the US housing markets that are most stable in all three major metro areas in Connecticut, including ours, made the list. If you're thinking about buying or selling and don't currently have an agent, don't hesitate to call me. I'd be happy to talk with you about your sale or purchase. Wait, I have one more option for you. If you're on your computer or watching on TV, whip out your phone and scan this QR code. It will bring you right to the page on our site related to the video.